The Fountain Avenue landfill, as well as the Pennsylvania Avenue landfill, was a 407-acre landfill located in the East New York section of Brooklyn, New York, known as Spring Creek, formerly Spring Creek Basin. Now, this area borders Queens and Brooklyn. To the east, you have Howard Beach section of Queens, and to the west of this area, you have the Canarsie section of Brooklyn. Now, the landfill was created in 1956 and completed in 1961. Before that, you had an area there called the Milford Street Landfill, which eventually would close in 1950, and is now a shopping center known as the Gateway Center. The Milford Street Landfill, which is now a shopping center, was located just on the other side of the Belt Parkway, across from the Fountain Avenue dump and the Pennsylvania Avenue dump. The Belt Parkway, which connects the southern part of Queens to Brooklyn, broke ground in 1934 and was completed by 1940. The immediate area of the Belt Parkway is known as Shore Parkway, which runs through the former location of the Fountain Avenue dump and the Pennsylvania Avenue dump. Despite the creation of the Belt Parkway, much of the area there remained a junkyard-ridden and landfill-ridden wasteland for many decades, until the 1970s when Spring Creek Towers, also known as Starrett City, was built. The Spring Creek Towers were completed in 1974 and made way for over 5,000 apartment units stretched out over 46 buildings sitting on 140 acres of land. This would be one of the first steps at revitalizing the immediate area. However, the Pennsylvania Avenue dump and the Fountain Avenue dump would still remain for another 10 years after the building's completion. The smell of garbage and toxic waste would waft through the air, and the occupants in the building even reported illness and respiratory conditions due to this. At one point, it was said that the landfill was up to 130 feet high. Now, you could imagine what this must have looked like looking down from the towers or smelled like. I mean, just driving through the Belt Parkway, going to Queens or going to Brooklyn. The site must have been absolutely atrocious. There were other revitalization plans for the area in the late 1960s into the 70s. But due to New York City's fiscal crisis at the time, much of it was scrapped. Now, we did end up with a mental health facility in 1973 and also a Brooklyn Public Library location in 1977. But what was with these garbage-filled eyesores and these horrid smells permeating the skies of New York City, what's supposed to be the greatest city on Earth? Well, you see, in 1934, the city barred any company or their own industries from dumping garbage at sea, which gave way to things like landfills and other ways of disposing of trash. Now, looking back, this might have been a good idea. You know, I, I could only imagine what the waterways and how negatively affected the wildlife would have been if the city just ended up dumping garbage overboard for another 50 years. So this seems to have been a better option, although we do see the negative effects in this as well. In 1974, during the revitalization efforts, an agreement was struck which would end the Pennsylvania Avenue landfill and the Fountain Avenue landfill. They would become part of the Gateway National Recreational Area, which stretches from New York City to Monmouth County, New Jersey. Many sanitation officials would fight against this, and they warned the city of an impending crisis as to where to put all this garbage. But despite their efforts, the agreement was still struck, and public outcry would also lead to the end of the Fountain Avenue dump and the Pennsylvania Avenue dump. You see also at that time, a lot of toxics and metals and phenols were leaking into Jamaica Bay, which is the largest body of water in the immediate area. And of course, if you wanted to keep revitalizing the area, get more residents to move in, open up future shopping destinations, this stinky oasis of garbage definitely had to go at some point. By the end of 1985, the Fountain Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue landfills, two toxic-filled next-door neighbors, were closed. Not after the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation would charge the city with violating environmental guidelines. Over the next couple of years, the area would be coated with 18 inches of clay and 6 inches of topsoil, and the city would spend $100 million removing toxic waste oil from the area. By the time of its closing, the city was also operating a couple of more landfills. You had the Fresh Kills landfill in Staten Island, and by the time that closed in 2001, it was known as the largest landfill in the world. Then you had the Edgemere landfill in Rockaway, Queens, which closed in 1991. 
both of which were havens for toxic waste residing along bodies of water in the New York City metropolitan area. By 1996, some of the plans that were scrapped during the 60s and 70s due to the fiscal crisis were coming back. Further revitalization of the area would ensue, with more affordable housing, and in 2000, the Gateway Center shopping mall would break ground and open in 2002. Furthermore, new schools and educational resource areas would also be developed. But as for the actual location of the Fountain Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue landfills, well, in 2019, after almost 25 years of its closure, the site would become Shirley Chisholm State Park, a 407-acre man-made parkland and marshland overlooking the Jamaica Bay shore. The place would be named after politician, educator, and author Shirley Chisholm, who was born in Brooklyn in 1924. But let's get to why you really clicked on this video. You see, despite the darkness of toxic waste, 100 foot high mounds of garbage, polluted air, there was even a darker history left behind in the Fountain Avenue landfill and Pennsylvania Avenue landfill. We'll speak more specifically about the Fountain Avenue landfill, more affectionately known as the Fountain Avenue dump, but if you're watching this, there's a chance you've never even heard of the Pennsylvania Avenue dump or much about the surrounding area. But they are literally next door neighbors, as you will see later in this video. Now, as far back as the 1930s, this place was said to be a mafia burial ground. First, starting with the Murder Inc. crew, which was headed by Louis Lepke Bucalter and later Albert Anastasia. Now, they were a brutal mafia hit team for the Italian and Jewish American mob, and it's said that they were known to be involved in somewhere between 400 and 1,000 contract killings from the 30s into the late 1950s. Most of this would have been pre-Fountain Avenue dump. It could have been used in the Milford Street landfill, which was where the shopping center is now, or the area where the Spring Creek Towers are now. Could have been using any place in the immediate area, because remember, it was all barren wasteland, junkyards, and... It was just empty. It was really just a place to drive through and get the hell out, unless you had other business there. And finally, perhaps the name that's most synonymous with using this area as a dumping ground for victims of murder, many of which ended up in the Fountain Avenue landfill. You had Edward Danny Grillo, crew member who was um, vital in connecting them with the Westies. He was in jail with Jimmy Coonan some years prior. So he helped with that initial connection with DeMeo Crew and the Gambinos. Then you had Ronald Falcaro and Khalid Dowd who were dismembered, more than likely brought there. You had Michael DiCarlo who is said to be the first murder for hire victim that was sent to the Fountain Avenue dump. And, you know, numerous other people ended up there. When you're talking about dozens upon dozens of murders and dismemberment, this was where these people ended up. Um, you know, they were using the Gemini method. If you're familiar with what that is, we can go over it. What, what that basically is, is they would go to the Gemini lounge. They would go into the back apartment where Roy DeMeo's cousin, Joseph Dracula Guglielmo, was living. And the way they went about this was they would shoot the person in the head. They would wrap a towel around his head. Then they would stab the victim in the heart. They would wait for all the blood to congeal. They would usually hang the body up in the bathtub. And once all the blood drained out and whatever was left was congealed, then they would dismember the body, wrap it up, and it would be shipped over to the Fountain Avenue dump. I mean, I hate to even speak about this in a manner which I am, but, you know, this is history. And this, is, this became the Gemini method. It's also important to know that, you know, at a New York Times article that I was reading... About 50% of all the trucks and the garbage that was going into the Fountain Avenue landfill and the Pennsylvania Avenue landfill were from private garbage trucks. So you had private industry, not only city going in there. So you also should know that a lot of that sanitation that was private and the carting companies was mob controlled. So they had an in basically from day one. You know, so we picture in our heads maybe like, oh, Roy DeMeo's driving the packages over to the Fountain Avenue dump. 
or the Gemini twins or Rosenberg or anybody that was in that crew. And more than likely, that was not the case. It was most likely that they had connections in the carting. They knew where to put the bodies that were going to be picked up and they were going to be shipped off there. Now, I can't say for sure that the guys never visited the dump or never dropped off bodies there themselves, but this is more the likely scenario. The DeMeo crew is an absolutely vicious crew, and it was known that people went to the Gemini Lounge to die, and then they would end up at the Fountain Avenue dump. You know, the Gambinos knew it, and I'm sure many Mafia families knew it, and they had a reputation. Now, going forward after all this history... There was still a couple of post-2000 incidents that occurred in the area. On March 6, 2013, two bodies were found near the Fountain Avenue landfill a few years before it would become a park. Um, and it was just um, desolate still at that time. The landfill was done by 85. Two bodies were found there, believed to be killed somewhere else. Once they were brought there, they were burned, which um, created a brush fire near Spring Creek and... Fire department and police were dispatched to the area and they found the bodies. And later on, it was proven to be in connection to a gangland killing that had to do with drugs. So they did eventually make an arrest with that one. Now, in 2006, John Jay graduate student Emet St. Guillen was at a bar and she was a little intoxicated. And at the bar, there was a bouncer by the name of Daryl Littlejohn, who was an ex-con. Now, he offered to give her a ride home, and he ends up raping and murdering him at St. Guillen. And he leaves her in a marshy area by the Fountain Avenue dump on the side of the Belt Parkway. You know, she was eventually discovered, and that led to his arrest, and he's in jail now for life. Um, so you see, even, you know, this is some, what, 25 years after demeo has gone, you know, there is still some darkness lingering in the area. And today it's a park and much of the area is revitalized and the community and New York City as a whole is trying to move past that dark history. But it still lingers. The ghosts of the past are still lingering. So I hope a lot of this was informative. And right now what we're going to do is we're going to head over there. We're going to head over to the former site of the Fountain Avenue dump and the Pennsylvania Avenue dump, and we're gonna check out the area. So let's get over there. So right now, we are at the location of the former Fountain Avenue dump. We're over here in East New York. We're gonna make our way up to the top. Just looking at some of the scenes out there. Over that way, you got Jamaica Bay. Over that way, you got Queens. You got like Rockaway, Ozone Park, Howard Beach. Over this way, you got East New York. A little more that way, you got Flatlands. So, just giving you a view from down here, which is Shirley Chisholm State Park, former home of the Fountain Avenue dump. And on the other side up over there, you would have had the uh, Pennsylvania Avenue dump. Now, this was a dump until 1985. Um, and it was finished in, I believe, 1961. 56 to 61, they built it. And this is the place you all heard about. There you have the Belt Parkway. 
There is the Belt Parkway, and over there you'll see a bridge. Over there. We're gonna walk over that. Give you guys a glimpse of the highway there. But this is it in its current state. You go Fountain Ring Drive. You look in the distance there, you can see the New York City skyline. See the Empire State Building right there. And this used to be a bunch of garbage. You know, as I mentioned in the video, this at one point was over a hundred feet high, full of garbage and seems to be just about that high now, filled with, you know, whatever's under us. And then you got clay and soil and over the years, you know, they planted and they got some of this wild grass here. The closer you get to the water, you'll have different types of grass, um, like saltwater resistant grass, you know, from the overspill from Jamaica Bay and all that. Anytime you go to a marsh or like uh, an area like this, you're going to see burrs and you're going to see types of grass, like cord grass and stuff like that. Egrets type of birds. Great blue herons, if you're lucky, you'll see one of those guys. But uh, yeah, you always see different wildlife whenever you got a marsh, which is what you got close over there by the water. We're also not too far from JFK Airport. All right, let's make our way up there a little bit. Former site of the Fountain Avenue dump. Now, Shirley Chisholm State Park. All right. So if you look in the distance there, you got all those buildings. Starrett City, Spring Creek Towers, whatever you want to call it. We discussed that in the video. That was one of the first steps at revitalizing the area started making those buildings try to bring some people in but you know at one point and we spoke about in the video about how murder inc was used in this area as far back as the 1930s to dump bodies and um you know right now you have all these buildings look you got a home depot you got that shopping center over there that was built it was finished in 2001 i believe 2002 you know, they actually had to stop building that actually when they were building it. They found the skull there with a bullet hole in it. So, you know, while they were breaking ground on that, they had to stop. And uh, I mentioned the name of that center, the shopping center in the video. Forgive me, I, I'm totally drawing a blank right now. Don't recall what the name of it was. But yeah, here we are overlooking. Pretty peaceful place, although it is early here on a Sunday morning. Let's get to the top over there. Let's get a better view. But this is what it is now. The Fountain Avenue dump. Now, of course, in modern history, as far as the more sinister things that happen here, we would associate it with Roy DeMeo and his crew as far as disposing of bodies here. You know, and then in one of the New York Times articles that I had sourced for doing this, you know, it said that at the time it was about 50% of the trucks that were coming in here to the Fountain Avenue dump were private carters. So, I mean, that's one of your answers right there. I mean, you know, the mob has historically had control of private sanitation and uh, carting industries, especially back then. You know, now, you know, I don't know. I can't speak to it. But back then, that was big business, disposing of garbage. So, 
that'll answer one of the questions as to why this place was kind of a easy place to use. You know, you put your stuff in the garbage. Well, not stuff, unfortunately, a body. Or you let the company know, or wherever you got the ants, they pick up the garbage, no questions asked. And they get, you know, they send it over here. Fountain Avenue dump. All right, so we got a little higher. This is a pretty cool view. And uh, just for reference, that shopping center, I looked it up, it's called the Gateway Center. I forgot. And you see all the buildings there, East New York, Brooklyn. And then as we came a little farther, the uh, Empire State Building is covered by fog now, but you can see the Freedom Tower over there, downtown Manhattan, uh, former site of the Twin Towers, of course, World Trade Center. Looking down on the Belt Parkway, you know, we got South Queens there, and this will take you all the way to the end there. This will take you pretty far. I mean, this is a way, you know, as a kid, we would go here visiting friends and family in Brooklyn or going to Coney Island. And um, it's funny, even then, you know, my dad or my uncle or somebody would make an offhand comment, like driving by here in the, you know, oh, you know how many bodies are in there, you know? <laughs> so even as a kid, I kind of knew, even though I didn't know as to why or, or what was going on. But, you know, there was always little jokes. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of bodies in there in the water and, you know, pre-construction of this, of these uh, areas here. You know, unfortunately, this is the resting place of a lot of people, you know, some unnamed, you know, of course, if when you're speaking about Murder, Inc., when you're speaking about Murder, Inc., you know, from the 30s, I mean, even more so, you don't know who the hell could have ended up in this area. This was all wasteland, this was all junkyards, you know? Who the hell knows who they put here? You know, some of them are documented murders, but you know, you never know. Same thing with the DeMeo crew. A lot of that is documented, of course. Like Michael DiCarlo, who was a bodybuilder apparently, and you know, he was a Lucchese associate and turned out that he was uh, a pedophile and he had, uh, you know, interactions with a child that they found out about. And, you know, the DeMeo crew, apparently, this was their first murder for hire. And uh, the first murder for hire that ended up here at Fountain Avenue Dump. Um, and supposedly that package was picked up by Anthony Center's uncle's sanitation company. So there you go, one of the 50% of companies one of those companies that was operating that was able to bring their garbage here. It wasn't just the city moving in and out of here. We'll go up a little higher over here. And of course, Edward Danny Grillo, who was a crew, you know, associate. He was, he was kind of getting down with the crew for a while. Um, you know, he was in jail with Jimmy Coonan prior. So, you know, he knew a bit about the Westies. He was a little... He was kind of pivotal in making some of that connection with the Westies and the DeMeo crew. And, you know, ultimately he ended up here, you know, cause he was in debt to Roy and he was basically in big trouble with the crew. And he got the Gemini method, unfortunately. Now, Dominic Montilio talks about this in Murder Machine. He goes to the Gemini and says, well, what's going on? Where's, where's, uh, where's Danny? Chris Rosenberg smirks. Haha, <laughs> you won't see him anymore. Um, you know, Dominic goes into the Gemini lounge and sees Roy. And Roy basically says, you know, if you want to talk to Danny, he's over at the Fountain Avenue dump. You know, right here where I'm walking. Kind of a messed up thing to say to someone that's supposed to be your friend, but you know, this is the life that these guys are living. They were basically fucking mass murderers. I know people try to separate serial killers and mobsters and, but you know, 
I think we can make an exception to some of them, you know, because of, by all accounts, that crew craved crime and murder. At these benches, maybe I'll stand up on one of these, get a nice high view. Once again, we're at uh, the former site of the Fountain Avenue dump here in East New York, Brooklyn, now known as Shirley Chisholm State Park, a 407 acre state park on the former site of the Fountain Avenue dump, as well as the Pennsylvania Avenue dump, which is a little on that side. Let's get up here. New York City skyline in the distance. You got East New York. You got flatlands over there, down there to the left in the back. If you're familiar with Jameo, you know the significance of Flatlands because that's where the Gemini Lounge was. Looks like I'm gonna be about to get rained on. All right. Well, I'm gonna head down and uh, hopefully if it's not raining too much, we'll get a chance to walk down under that uh, bridge over the highway there and check out the other side. Really wanna give you guys a feel of the area um so uh yeah see you soon all right guys i got absolutely soaked before but it's all right i had to actually leave the park to get to this other side i'm actually on the pennsylvania avenue dump side and uh right there that body of water that's uh that's hendrix creek and this is the Pennsylvania Avenue landfill. Right over here. I'm sorry, that actually might still be the Fountain Avenue dump. And behind me over here, this is the Pennsylvania Avenue landfill. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little confused. Like I said, I had to leave to go to the other side so I can walk over this bridge here. So you can see, well, you're getting a better view of the dump from here. So, so I'm soaked, but I wanted to walk over this bridge here on the side of the Belt Parkway. I wanted to give you guys, you know, whatever I can do to kind of give you a better feel of the area, you know, I don't mind doing. So I thought it would be cool if we walked over this bridge, got a little glimpse of Hendrix Creek which is gonna flow out into Jamaica Bay. And then where we were before on the Fountain Avenue side, you had the Spring Creek Inlet. So that was Spring Creek over there. And uh, we're on the side of the highway now. Last time I was here, I had some weirdo on a motorcycle speeding on this little bridge. Let's hope I don't get into that situation this time. Luckily, the rain has stopped. So that's good. So right there in the distance, you have Jamaica Bay. That's where everything opens up over there. And immediately right here, where there's a little, there's a guy fishing over there. That'll be Hendricks Creek. And uh, here we go, let's go over the highway. Let's get a little look over here. This is the Belt Parkway, the Shore Parkway section of it, Shore Parkway. All right. Just as I was saying, there they go. Not motorcycles, like mo mopeds or whatever, but they come pretty quick. So, I wasn't lying. All right, so here we go. Let's look down here. Let's get a better view here. All right. 
probably enough guns down there to arm a small country. I'm taking that quote from somewhere, I don't remember. But you get the picture. So over there, we see that's the Fountain Avenue dump on that side there. That's where we were before. And let's just continue walking over. Oh, we get a little cool look over here. Let's just continue walking over to the other side. You know what, I'm gonna get up over here. We got a nice view over here. Let's see if I can get up here. All right, guys, still on the Pennsylvania Avenue dump side, former location of the Pennsylvania Avenue dump. And I tell you, I'm glad I came over here because we're getting a nice view of the former location of the Fountain Avenue dump right up there. Roy DeMeo's favorite dumping ground, as well as Murder, Inc., dating back to the 30s and into the 50s. And then, you know, Roy and his crew you know, in the 70s, late 70s. All right. Final resting place of many known and many unknown. Hendricks Creek right here. Flowing out into Jamaica Bay in the distance there. And there we got the Bell Parkway. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed taking this little trip with me. I know this place is something that has been discussed. This, you know, especially if you follow um, New York City mob history, um, more more recent history. Roy DeMeo, I believe, would you know most likely be associated with this place the most as far as criminal activity. If you read Murder Machine, if you spend any time looking into that crew, you know about this place. So. I'm glad I was able to take you along for the journey. Once again, we're looking at the former site of the Fountain Avenue dump. From 1956 to 1961, this was built. By the, the end of 1985, they were done here. Time to revitalize the neighborhood and get rid of the smelly past of old. All right, let's sign off.